just love Joy FM. of your favorite business development program on Radio Masterclass. Masterclass is powered by Joy Business and brought to us by Goyle. Goyle, good energy, girl, Yenara, Yedia. Masterclass is also brought to us by Lancaster University, labels for being the only British university campus in all of West Africa. My name is Yabana Fo and I'll be your host for today's show. Still in the month of November, inching closely to December, like we always say here on the show, Christmas is almost going to be here. If there's something that you plan to do beginning of year you still haven't done yet, you've still got a few more days to go, it's, too, it's never too late to start. By all means, do start something and then you'll be glad that you did. Last week, we started a different conversation after we had spent some time talking about project management. And it was on the rather interesting topic of the future of work. The future of work. Everything is changing. Post-COVID-19, a lot of things are changing. The way we think, the way we work. You hear two key words, and I was glad to hear those words on the morning show today. Winston was talking about them, digitization and digitalization. I think last week we spent some time, our host tried to explain the differences for us. That's taking over pretty much everything that we're doing. We started an interesting conversation last week. We didn't have a lot of time last week. Today, I'm, I'm going to speak very little, and I'm going to allow my guest to tell us a bit more about this conversation and how it affects us in our daily lives and how it affects us in our businesses and how we should position ourselves to be relevant because one of the things that struck me in the conversation last week when it started was the top 10 jobs that are going to be here in the next five to ten years and the top 10 jobs that are going to decline my guest for today's show same as last week is mr richard or say any richard you're welcome to the conversation thank you very much and um, richard has one of those cvs if i'm going to read it um it's going to take forever because it's a very impressive cv but he's the chairman and managing partner of the hatchery Positivo BGH, which is a technology firm with interest in educational technology and health solutions, and he works out of Accra. He's got a very tall CV. He's been there and back, <laughs> worked in the US, in the UK, in Europe, in all sorts of places, and he's Ghanaian. He's one of our very own. This afternoon, Richard is going to share some thoughts with us for free. We don't have to pay, go online, pay anybody. Just listen, just stay tuned in. And you get some tips. Careful, I've been sending a new voice. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, I'm excited because you know, one of the key things that we've learned in the past, let's say, five, um, seven years is that information is power. <laughs> information is power. Data today is becoming, should I say, more valuable than gold because with data you can make more money, yep. isn't it? Yep. So yep. it's always a great thing when we are able to share information with people so that we can all become better. Yeah as individuals, as families, as homes, as companies, yeah. and as a nation. Absolutely. Last week, we started a conversation <coughs> introducing what's going to happen with all of these things that are changing, the changes that have begun to affect the world. Maybe one minute, you can do a quick recap, and then we can sort of go into today's yeah. conversation. I'm particularly excited about the top 10 jobs. <laughs> you know, I had a, a listener from the U.S., Ike. Yes. Ike, good afternoon to you if you're listening. And he wanted us to go over them again. All I think right, we didn't okay. have time to do that. Yes, let me see if I can retrieve um, his question. His question. And, yes, uh, yes. And I mean, otherwise, yes. we can always address it when we get interactive. Right, okay. Yes. But let's just do a quick recap, and then we go straight into today's okay. conversation. So, yes, we started last week looking at it from a global perspective, mm -hmm. uh, where the world was going. And we were talking about the fact that certain parts of the Western world, when they sneeze, we, we catch a cold. Mm. And what is happening in terms of technology, uh, digitization, digitalization. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had an argument on the forum <laughs> on these two <laughs> words. Um, what is happening with um, automation and innovation? We talked about the fact that as soon as you release automation, innovation needs to plug in because automation tends to deplete jobs. Mm -hmm. But innovation starts... Uh, creating more jobs, this thing about robotics and so on, and how that affects our local environment in terms of education, in terms of how we train, in terms of technical, vocational, tertiary mm -hmm. um, education, and also really the world of work. Entrepreneurship is a big, big, big uh, part mm -hmm. of, of what we do. And it's interesting to think about how 
entrepreneurship is going to change and how entrepreneurs need to start thinking about the various spaces they occupy, the opportunities, the challenges. Uh, entrepreneurship for me is a very simple thing. Mm. Can you solve problems? Can you solve those problems at a cost-effective uh, price point enough to make you make a profit? And what is your risk appetite mm. in all this? In all this, so at some point um, we will we will get into entrepreneurship. So I think that's how we started la la last week. But but today I really wanted to focus on the foundation of the, the future of work. Before it, you yes. before you even go on, okay. you know, you, in your introduction you mentioned the thing about positioning ourselves yes. in a way that yes. allows us to be relevant for the future. Yes, there's something happening in Ghana, and I think that a lot of the people within that industry know about mm -hmm. it. We've heard about Tesla. Yes, and when I say Tesla, let me extend it and go to electric cars. Okay, so for those of you who are listening to us who have not heard yet, there are some vehicle companies in Ghana who are already testing yes. electric cars. And they are in Ghana. Yeah. It's not that they are going to be brought into Ghana. They are here and they are being tested. And they don't run on petrol or diesel. <laughs> Let me leave it there. <laughs> Interesting point. I, I, I walked into, um, I, I spent some time on a golf course in another mm. part of the world. And when I walked into the car park, all I saw were charging devices for electric cars. That's where I, I mean, was going. <laughs> so uh, if we're talking about opportunity That's for people, doing. need to start thinking about, could they provide charging points exactly. at different and, places? And that's something for, that hasn't yeah. started yet. You're an entrepreneur, you're listening, you're already in the industry. Begin to think about how you're going to put yourself in a good place. It's being done elsewhere. Yeah. Go and learn the blueprint. Don't yeah. reinvent the wheel yourself. Yeah. In the next 10 years, when Ghana begins to have electric cars on our roads, those cars need to stop somewhere and charge. Absolutely. Who's going to sell the implements? Who's yeah. going to retail them? Yeah. What's going to be the government policy on all those things? Put yourself in there now, so that you know when the time comes, you're in a, you're in a great place. Yeah, I think that's a scoop, yeah. a free and scoop from Masterclass. Of class. course, of course, <laughs> and, and 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 I think uh, recently, a few months ago, I saw the Minister of Energy testing mm. uh, what you call it, an electric vehicle. Yeah. Um, so the opportunity exists. So That's about the time to start exploring. There's actually another company here that is doing electric taxis. Mm. Uh, one of those companies out of the hubs, I think mm. it's Kumasi Hive or something. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, so quickly on the top 10 emerging jobs uh, for your listener uh, who said I went through too fast mm -hmm. for him uh, <laughs> last, last week. So the top 10 emerging jobs, number one, data analysts and scientists. Mm -hmm. Two, AI and machine learning specialists. Three, general and operations managers. Four, software and applications developers and analysts. Five, sales and marketing professionals. Six, big data specialists. Seven, digital transformation specialists. Eight, new technology specialists. Nine, organi organizational development specialists. And 10, information technology services. Now the declining one, no prizes for guessing, data entry clerks, accounting, bookkeeping, bookkeeping and payroll clerks, administrative and executive secretaries, assembly and factory workers, client information and customer service workers, business services and administration managers, accountants and auditors, material recording and stock keeping clerks, general and operations managers, and postal service clerks. Uh, postal service, we talked about, when was the last time you actually wrote and delivered a physical letter? Everything is pretty much emails, in emails yeah. and um, uh, scans and mail. so on and so yeah. forth. So um, that is where we are going. And and the speed at which this is happening is, is just mm. phenomenal. Uh, one of the World Economic Reports, Forum Reports that I read, that was two years ago, was mm. saying that th th these kinds of jobs I'm talking about will be available in 2022. We are nearly this in close. 2022. Yes. We are a few months, we're in 2022. And it's imagine. Another report I read, which was, which was um, put together about a year ago, projected to 2025. But the, the, the kind of framework we're working with is about 2030. Mm. Link everything to SDG goals and sustainable mm. development goals, uh, climate change and so on mm. and so forth. And climate change has been quite topical over the last Indeed. Few, Indeed. Few, um, few, few weeks, uh, what they're doing in, in Glasgow, Scotland. Um, so... Uh, today, I wanted to focus on early childhood development mm. uh, as a foundation for the kind of skills mm -hmm. that uh, people need to be thinking about. Globally. And I just mentioned to those who are listening who are entrepreneurs and business mm -hmm. owners that um, we started this conversation off air. Yeah. So our promise is that 
once he's done sharing the early childhood development, yeah. we're going to look at the implication on the kind of workforce you have right, right. now, how they've been formed, and yes. what you can do as a business owner to either enhance what they've learned, which is yeah. right, or change what they've learned, which is wrong. So Good don't stuff. go away. Okay. So, I mean, as usual, let, let's deal with some stats. Mm. Uh, 250 million children under the age of five are at the risk of not reaching their full developmental potential. Globally, you have 260 million between the age of 15 and 24 out of school and out of work. Poor healthcare, nutrition, first thousand days of a child's development is critical. Is, is, I mean, in between the ages of two, zero to two, is when the child actually starts to learn how to learn. Mm. Our brain function, I mean, the, the, the science and the research points to the fact that our brain function starts developing at that space, at, a, at, that, at that age. Mm -hmm. So it's extremely important that you pay attention to the kind of nutrition, the kind of engagement, the kind of stimulation that the child has in terms of their early childhood development, uh, whether it's in preschool, whether it's in nursery, mm -hmm. whether it's in kindergarten, pre-kindergarten, that, that, that kind of, um, that, that frame, if you get it wrong at that, f at that point in time, and there are studies in, in Jamaica and Guatemala where they looked at kids from uh, zero to 18 mm -hmm. and how that has impacted their world of work, and in Guatemala from 18 to 24 and how that has affected their their their, their world of work. Yeah. It's 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 fi it's it's critical that mm. uh, policymakers, health development specialists, uh, medical professional, parents, pay attention to that 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 um, stage of, of, of growth. Okay. Um, so the zero to three years phase, when a child needs good investments in health, nutrition, and stimulation, uh, three to five years important for children how to socialize and engage in play-based <coughs> learning, okay? Um, there's, a, there's one condition that affects children globally as well, a condition called stunting. Mm. Stunting. And it's, a, it's so important, I mean, it it's actually impairs growth and development uh, that children experience from poor nutrition, repeated infection, and psychosocial stimulation. Uh, WHO defines a stunted child as uh, if their height for age is more than two standard deviations below the WHO star, uh, child growth standards median. Stunting in early life, I talked about the first thousand days from conception until the age of two, impairs growth. There's poor cognition and educational uh, performance. It impacts your, lo uh, your adult wages, lost productivity, Sometimes excessive weight gain uh, later on in, in, in life, increased risk of nutrition-related chronic, chronic diseases in, in early, early life. So it's, it's like a slowdown of It's of a slowdown of your progress. Of, yeah, your, your whole developmental process <laughs> is, is, is kind of a slowdown. But in terms of uh, when, when students or children go to school, people start to equate or historically have uh, equated the fact that the fact that you've attended attendance doesn't necessarily mean that you've learned true you know so keep going to school keep going to school going through uh, what you call it um, the various lessons tests and so on and so forth all sorts of test course uh, I, I mean I, I keep saying this is a this is a this is a whole semester course so it, it's very difficult to sort of uh, deep dive in some of these things so let, let, let me run through it but the, 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 the the World Bank have a human capital index, uh, which looks at health and education data for many countries. Mm -hmm. And it calculates how a generation may fall short of achieving their full poten potential. Mm. It combines five carefully selected indicators, child survival, the school environment, quality of learning, healthy growth, and adult survival. They work it out and calculate it between zero and one percent mm -hmm. based on how much indicator contributes to productivity as an adult what does all this mean will the child live long will, will they stay will, will, will they die before their time mm -hmm. will the child learn to read and write uh, fluently 
Will the child become confident in math, science, and problem solving? Will the child be prepared for university? Hash, I mean, uh, that one, you need to slash it to technical, vocation, mm -hmm. whatever. Our fixation has always tertiary. been... Tertiary. Tertiary, yes. Our fixation has always been uh, university. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, there are different parts as we painfully start to, to sort of uh, realize mm -hmm. uh, based on our coloni colonialization and our socialization. Mm -hmm. um, will the child grow up in a healthy and safe environment and so on? So for each country, the Human Capital Index tells a story. A story about what the future of the future of a generation will be compared to and what it could be. If a country, for example, has a, a, an index value of, say, 0 0.6, uh, it means that the, producti the productivity of that generation of the workforce will be about 60%. Right. Let me let that sink in. So at 0 0.6, the productivity, you are not exploiting your full potential. I mean, that means there's a loss or shortfall of about 40%. 40%. Okay, I'll come to Ghana's uh, human capital index. And it's also slightly gender gender biased for all sorts of uh, mm. uh, reasons. Um, you actually, for that 0 0.6, business as usual is, ca is costing the country about 40% mm -hmm. of its income in the long run. Ghana's human capital index straddles between 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 depending on gender wow for for males it's slightly above the 0 0.4 inching wow. towards the 0 0.5 slightly below for 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 fe females that, that's combining that, all the all the factors you all spoke the factors about. I, I i listed i mean and, and 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 it starts right from early childhood all the way through primary secondary tertiary for those that cut off at a basic school, which is GHS, I think last time I read somewhere that now basic school is actually, cons a SHS is now considered part of uh, basic school. So from zero to 17 or 18, when you leave SHS and migrate on to, or make, make the switch on to tertiary. Uh, so the human capital index measures all these things. And, and that number is, paints a, a picture or a story of what is happening in any country. I'm quiet because I'm just thinking 50%, even yeah. if it's 55, that's a shortfall of what? 45. Yeah. 45%. You know, um, there, there are all sorts of interventions that government tries to make and so on and so forth, but it really drills down back to the foundation. Mm. Now you look at certain parts, Accra, as we live in, in Accra, there are all sorts of plush residential places and so in on Accra, but yeah. in Accra which is the capital there are several pockets of deep levels of deprivation mm -hmm. and if you if you should go and what do you call it uh, do a, a bit of research on that spaces you will see some of the things I'm talking about mm -hmm. as far as uh, nutrition is concerned Indeed. as far as the kind of education that the the, the, the children are exposed the to access, in, in that sort of access uh, inclusion equity mm. these are three key words that should accompany any education uh, system but um, struggles in in certain uh, environments now we, we, we sort of uh, looked at what is the ideal what is the nirvana what is uh, what do you call it uh, paradise as far as education 4.0 is concerned mm. concerned and what sort of skills should be embedded in the curriculum so that kids naturally uh, so by the time they come out of school they're prepared it, they're it's, ready it's embedded it's embedded i was talking to you earlier on about the culture of reading which was uh, embedded in uh, my case study uh, mm -hmm. Safo. as early as six seven years mm -hmm. he was dropped at uh, what do you call it uh, british council mm -hmm. that kind of uh, to read mm -hmm. generally to read for two three hours uh, that kind of uh, uh, process was or embedded orientation, if you like orientation. And, uh, yes, yeah. and 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 that carried on throughout throughout his life. Okay, I mean th th they were comparing who's read Hardy Boys, who's read Nancy Drew, who's read mm -hmm. Annie Blyton, compared to another guy, Sunny, who went to uh, mm -hmm. Fadama Ali. Both of them after w after school will play football together. Together, but the orientation. 
completely diff different. L l let me quickly get on to the. Uh, I'm aware of the of the time. Um, global citizenship skills. Mm -hmm. That's one of the core skills that needs to be developed, or the curriculum needs to be developed, and the content must focus on building awareness about the wider world, sustainability, and playing an active role in the global community. So the global citizenship skills. Mm -hmm. Kids need to develop or be orient be or, uh, oriented in global cit citizenship skills. Innovation and creativity skills. Foster skills for innovation, complex problem solving, analytical thinking, creativity and systems analysis. Mm -hmm. You know, there are ways of structuring assessments from as little as five years all the way through mm -hmm. to be able to hit those types of yeah. uh, uh, skills that we're, we're talking about. Technology skills. We've been talking about digitization and digitalization. Digital skills, in programming, digital responsibility and the use of technology. Interpersonal skills. Emotional intelligence. I mean, people tend to miss the difference between the IQ and the and the EQ. EQ. Yeah. And in, in more ways than one, as we sort of uh, engage with schools and uh, parents mm -hmm. and all sorts of students, IQ is fantastic. But in the kind of globalized world that we're looking at, EQ or emotional intelligence is actually becoming uh, a very strong uh, uh, skill that needs to be nurtured and cultivated in, in, in students. Mm. So interpersonal, emotional intelligence, empathy, cooperation, negotiation, leadership, and social awareness. You know, w we're talking earlier on about empathy mm -hmm. and the fact that in some environments or spaces in schools and so on, because a kid may be autistic or may be uh, excluded excluded because of a certain condition which they have no mm -hmm. uh, control over. Mm -hmm. and, and parents need to understand that they cannot shield their kids mm -hmm. from these types of uh, environments and spaces because mm -hmm. they will leave uh, you will suffer the emptiness syndrome they will go on to college they will go on to the world of work mm -hmm. and they will have to deal with different people from different backgrounds races mm. uh, gender uh, all these um, uh, issues that we are having recently on the LBGQ you would have to relate to people from yeah. different backgrounds yeah. and if empathy is not one of the skills you have cultivated or nurtured, mm -hmm. you're going to have problems in in um, the the world of the world of work. But you know, I have I have always maintained mm -hmm. that um, education, and I, I, I love that word. I, mm -hmm. I, I prefer the word education to schooling. Okay. Because education is total. Yes. It's not just the academics. Holistic. And so I always say that education is a preparation for life. Mm -hmm. You learn how to deal with other people. You learn how to you know, deal with a person who's not as smart as you are, yeah. who's not as endowed as you are, who's not as intelligent as you are, or who's more intelligent than you are. You learn how to deal with successes and mm -hmm. failures. You learn how to interact, social, you know, skills and all of that. Then it's such a critical part of our orientation process for our children. It and, is. And, and educationists who are listening to us, who are, let's say you're an owner of a school, you're a business person, you own a school, you run a school. It's absolutely critical to understand that the curriculum that you deliver must prepare these children to become all-round persons. We talk about exposure, we mm -hmm. talk about, now we find that yeah. in certain schools and in certain curricula, the children are, are being engaged more on, let's say, excursions, on field trips yep. for the learning process. Yep. I, I always give the example that mm -hmm. I finished, <laughs> I finished senior high. Yeah. I did geography in school. Yeah. And I learned about igneous rocks. <laughs> Igneous the sedimentary first time I saw uh, an I'm igneous rock yes. was when I finished university right. and I had the chance to travel to a certain place. <laughs> now, how does how do I compete with a child my yeah. age who would go into the field on a field trip yeah. and they will say, that's what an igneous rock looks like. It comes out of so and so. Yeah. That's what sedimentary rocks yeah. look like. I, yeah. I, they would never have to no. memorize the definition. Mm. So I, it's I, I, I sent you to, a video. To, yeah, I want to hit on that yeah. for me for business owners yeah. who run educational institutions. Yeah. yeah, it's important how we condition these children Absolutely. because otherwise you create problems for the job market. Absolutely, Absolutely. and and it takes me back to when we were in school and the kinds of 
um, jokes that we used to make around some of our colleagues or, s- or, or mates who were not academically sort mm. of uh, inclined. inclined. Yes. Um, going back and uh, when I was doing my teacher training, mm. one of the key things was how you engage a classroom. There are people that may be autistic. There mm-hmm. are people that may be blind. Uh, I mean, in terms of color, mm. color, color blind. There are people that cannot hear you. Mm-hmm. Your your lesson notes and everything needs to be tailored to make sure that mm-hmm. every person in the in the in the classroom is was is able to benefit. Ab- able to benefit. But back quickly to um, the, the 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 school owners and educationists mm-hmm. and so on. It, it, this is fundamental. This is where the world is going, and these are building blocks for. Uh, providing digital skills mm-hmm. to uh, your, your your students. Um, I was just about talking about personalized and self-paced learning, individual le- uh, uh, lesson mm-hmm. plans and tailoring and making education bespoke mm-hmm. to the, the child. Yes, I mean, if you go into a public space where, uh, let's say a, a, a university, or maybe Ghana or Tech or whatever, where one subject has about 2,000, 3,000 <laughs> uh, what do you call it? Uh, how Students. do you how do you sort of uh, make sure that you can tailor to all these uh, type uh, mm-hmm. students? Uh, how do you make sure that? Ev- but now the technology exists. Mm-hmm. You can do a diagnostic of uh, an individual and actually identify the strengths, their weaknesses, mm-hmm. all sorts of opportunities that they can exploit based on their unique skill 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 sets. Accessible and inclusive learning. Access to school buildings to one which everyone has access to learning and is therefore inclusive. So, mm-hmm. buildings, that kind of hardcore infrastructure in a globalized education 4.0, it's really not, uh, what do you call it, a big issue. I mean, you can deliver learning uh, now, I'm, irrespective of. I'm smiling of, because uh, there's a phrase I heard, you know, without borders. Without borders. So, yeah. now I'm thinking we're, we're looking at education, education without, without borders. borders. Some people are even talking about the Uberization of education. Okay. Where you can receive education indeed in, in, on, the in, go. On, on the go. Uh, this this uh, what do you call it? Um, this this uh, device mm. can can receive education. Can receive lectures. You can podcast and everything on 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 the go. And can even assess you mm. and provide you your printed certificate. Can send you your your, your certificate online for so you. So that end to end, you would you would essentially be looking absolutely. At you know, I, I want our listeners to be a part of this conversation. And so I'm going to try and open the phone lines right, a bit early. Okay. But I, before I do that, I want to take a, a quick commercial break. Right. But let's just hold that thought for mm-hmm. me for a minute. Because okay. when we come back from the break, I want us to be able to harp on it. Being able to position ourselves so that we can end-to-end digitize yeah. some of our processes. Mm-hmm. We can start from the low-hanging fruits. Of it doesn't have to be the big things. Because yeah. there are people who have enough deeper pockets who are handling those things. Right. And they're making it pro bono. Yeah for everyone else. But you can start from the little things. Yeah. Like you're saying, your certification, mm-hmm. your travel pass. Mm-hmm. If you travel every time and you fly, where mm-hmm. are you keeping your tickets? Yeah. I know someone who keeps all of their tickets on their device. Yeah. Let's just hold yeah. that thought for okay. a minute. We'll take a quick message from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Your favorite on-air business development program, Joy Business Masterclass, is in session. And you can interact with us on Facebook, via the Joy 99.7 FM or Joy Business pages. If you tweet, the handle is at Joy 997 FM or at Joy Business GH. Don't forget to hashtag JB Masterclass. You can also call us on 0302-216541 or send your questions and contributions through to the WhatsApp number 551 and our facilitators will address your concerns. Attention, everyone. Class is in progress. Welcome back. If you've just tuned in, this is Masterclass, and we're getting interactive right now. Today, we're having a conversation on the future of work, the future of work. And Richard Oseyanim is here to fill some questions for us. It's an exciting conversation. We want you to be a part of it. So you can pick up that phone, give us a call on 0302-216-541. That's 0302-216-541. You can also send us your comments on WhatsApp on 05511. One one nine nine seven. That's zero five five one 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 nine nine seven. Pick up that phone. Give us a call. Zero three zero two two one six five four one. What are you doing in your business as a business owner in all of this digitization, digitalization? How are your processes becoming smarter? How are you positioning yourself 
and metamorphosing to become relevant in the future. We've just shared thoughts here about some of the jobs, top 10 jobs that are going to be here in the next five to seven years and top 10 jobs that are going to decline. How are you positioning yourself as a business owner? Let's share ideas on some of these conversations and we can all become better for it. Numbers to call 03022 Masterclass today is brought to us by Goyle. Goyle Good Energy. Girl Yenara Yedia. And also by Lancaster University, the only British university campus in all of West Africa. While we're waiting for the phone lines to ring, Richard, we're, we're making the point early on. Yeah. What are some of the low-hanging fruits that um, business owners can begin to look at? And after you answer that question, and if the phone rings, we'll take that one. But mm-hmm. the, ne- the question I asked you off air, right. which is that if I'm a business owner and I have a workforce today, there's a certain outcome that already exists. It's either they are well prepared or they are not. Now, if they're well prepared, hooray. Yeah. If I find that they're not mm-hmm. through a certain assessment process, yeah. what should I do as a business owner right. in trying to remedy yeah. the situation? I, I, I think for before you recruit, and, and there's this thing uh, in computing called garbage in, garbage out, it, it tells clearly whether the person you recruited is, is fit for purpose or not, and as to whether they are giving you, are they efficient or effective in the sort of things that you're, mm-hmm. you're engaging them to do. What is your return on investment as far as human capital is concerned in your organization? Mm-hmm. And, and that really takes a decent enough, uh, what we call a, a diagnostic of the, of the, of the individual. Uh, it rips apart the individual, goes into their, um, whether they are innovative, whether they are adaptive, whether they, they can uh, create, create, what do you call it, um, whether they can pr- solve problems, whether they are creative, uh, what sort of, what is their innovation bias? These are things that, as a business owner, you should have a hang on as far as your, uh, what your human capital is con- is concerned. Mm. And some may need to go back to school. Mm. Some require to unlearn. Yes, on you unlearn to relearn. Mm. Some people need to find a way to, uh, and that's from a business owner's perspective. Mm. Some sort of investment needs to go into your human human mm. capital. Some you may have to let go. Uh, the, the others could do with coaching. And, and I find it uh, coaching thrives in s- different environments, but it's not a big thing here. People willingly lending themselves to be coached. Mm-hmm. Man, know thyself. Uh, th- these are my weaknesses. Uh, can 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 support? Can I get support to sort of uh, uh, diminish I my weaknesses? It's the orientation that says, if I say that I don't know, then I'm weak. Then I shouldn't be there. Yeah. Maybe over time that will change. Over time, I mean, and and that's part of our socialization and our and our what do you call it? Uh, uh, people say you, mm. you shouldn't be ha- happening on about colonialization and all these kinds of things. But uh, some of those things are as a function of how mm. the world of work was set up at that time. We were primed to just build uh, empire. Mm. So your your condition to go to primary school, secondary, whatever, and our best, our best at the time ended up in all sorts of schools overseas and came back to work in public sector. Mm. Mm. If you don't do well these days and you don't do so well in uh, social, uh, what do you call it, um, in, in secondary school mm-hmm. or whatever, they say, oh, kudi police, mm-hmm. kudi teacher. Mm-hmm. In some environments, that the, the, the most, uh, what do you call it, innovative and uh, mm-hmm. most uh, the br- brightest the bright minds. minds actually end up in teaching. However, our, our, our socialization is everything that, okay, th- these kinds of uh, jobs are, uh, if you don't and make it to... those are the most sensitive it. ones, if you like. Exactly. You know, so there's something to do with our socialization, our orientation and mindset. Uh, mm. Which I'm also sure, needs to change. I'm not sure how, how long that will happen, whether, it's a co- whether we're going to do... Whether we need a revolution or no, an I, evolution, I mean, I mean hopefully, I, I, I'm not sure how we're going to deal with that. With all of these changes in digitization, we'll keep talking about yeah. it, and hopefully, we will be able to make some some kind of impact, if yeah. you like, with 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 changes in that field. Yeah. What would you say to parents mm-hmm. who whose whose words are in school and they're, they're going to come out and become the workforce of the mm-hmm. future in the next couple of years, if the curriculum that they are currently going through does not offer them the total exposure? as a human being, positioning them and making them relevant for the future. What additions can parents make? Because you are in EduTech. Yeah. What additions can parents make to the existing um, offering that the, the awards are receiving? Yeah, I, I think, I think um, parents should consider extracurricular activities. Mm. There's so much on, on, on the web, Khan, Khan Academy, 
is one or DLO. There are all sorts of interventions on, 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 on the web. That and what do they learn in this extracurricular that is not present in the mainstream curriculum? A lot of the STEM related subjects are not necessarily in the uh, so coding and robotics for instance mm -hmm. are not in a lot of uh, curriculum and that mm -hmm. has to be an extracurricular activity i sent you a video earlier mm -hmm. on of a laptop and mm -hmm. uh, i wish we could show it but i mean mm -hmm. we don't have to maybe next time yeah but if a, a child is learning uh the the human skeleton mm -hmm. uh, from a 3d model uh, i don't even know if that's what that is jumping mm -hmm. out of the screen you can pick it up and mm -hmm. what do you call it uh, it's play around with play it. around and so on and so on compared to somebody who's just taking a dry book uh i'm, I'm not sure i've forgotten what biology book we used back in in the it was the, the guest day. wasn't it uh no uh, my t my mind was uh, earlier. much earlier my <laughs> <laughs> much <laughs> it was Modimbo. <laughs> it was called Modimbo. but i forgot mm. the, the author of, the, of that book i mean dry hard what do you call it yes i mean you, was you it could not Akula? No, Akula was no 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 was also <laughs> that. some of us actually you knew <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so uh, but you get to go to the laboratory mm -hmm. and play around with dissecting a frog and so on and yeah. so forth. Uh, yeah. uh, some, a lot of schools these days don't even have those types of, mm. of, of la la laboratories. So, but technology makes it possible. Indeed. All, the, all, all this is, is all been all uh, digitalized. So, mm. it's very easy to have access to that kind of uh, uh, extracurricular, mm. uh, what do you call it, um, information for your, for your, for your children. And make them well-rounded, I suppose, also. Yes. The, the, there was another point I wanted to make, which was about the teachers, mm -hmm. the type of teachers. <laughs> There's another one on, on social media. I, I don't see your name. It says, please go over the, the list of new job areas again. I think that people yeah, are really that's interested. That's a very, uh, <laughs> maybe we may have to spend one program just, I think so. just, just focused just, on, focus yes. on that. But quickly, I mean, the, the type of teachers that... Mm will be fit for purpose for mm -hmm. education 4.0 mm -hmm. because by inference mm -hmm. if these are the skills that are required are required or the children or students need mm -hmm. to have then who's going to teach them if they themselves are not necessarily fit for purpose mm -hmm. so teachers need to be and for me the work we do i mean our core focus is teachers because really without teachers you cannot get on to the learner indeed uh, so teachers increase the use of technology for mm -hmm. teachers the focus of social and emotional learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those days where you were caning people and well, the rod of correction not <laughs> departing far from the child. Uh, uh, no, these times, th 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 these days, uh, what, not, not, not teacher and... Uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, Face the uh, corner. Uh, I, hear, I hear the nouveau riche is mm -hmm. like, uh, you won't go to London this year. That's their, hey. that's their discipline. <laughs> <laughs> but on a, on, a, on a more serious note with, with, with teachers, devote more, teach, more teaching on uh, global issues, especially climate change. Mm. I think one of our most uh, biggest issues, and I don't really see the conversation in this country. We, we're not talking about climate mm. change. It's it's n not registered on our radar, you know. But you look at our, our whole agri sector. I mean, the, the kinds of uh, rainfall patterns that mm -hmm. have shifted. Our biggest earner, which is uh, cocoa, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the 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 way the the, the trees the numbers, are not. Yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, you add you add uh, what you got uh, um, environmental degradation mm -hmm. through. Uh, what do you call it, Galamse and mm -hmm. all these stuff. And then th it's an existential threat, but for some reason, it's it doesn't. It's not on the front burner mm -hmm. uh, as far as uh, we we are concerned. So I think those are some of the things that we need to start uh, the conversation and 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 intensify mm -hmm. as far as uh, curriculum is concerned. For 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 business owners or school for school owners and so on. Uh, this curriculum then positions your, your, your school to be considered what is called um, Education 4.0, a, a school that is training people mm -hmm. for the fourth industrial revolution. Right. I've got this comment. You didn't add your name. It says, okay. It says, I'm a photographer into editorials and conceptual content. Mm -hmm. How could I channel it into problem solving while I make profit and also... Um, this requires a whole business plan. <laughs> I'm not too sure. But, then <laughs> the, but, but I, I get yeah. the first part of the question. How can he channel his uh, um, job as a photographer into editorials and conceptual content? I think that's a, that's a bigger conversation. That's a it? bigger conversation. I mean, people, I, I'm seeing people, uh, different photographers on social media, mm -hmm. uh, cataloging uh, different places of the country mm -hmm. and selling those uh, mm -hmm. 
what do you call it um uh, images uh, stock 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 yeah. what do you call it? i mean the other bit about that creativity mm-hmm. what do you call it I, I'm, I'm not sure i, I get yeah but you see for me another thing i'll just share with this with this person is also that you should probably begin to research into the future of photography yeah because it's it's changing so fast i mean all of these new phones that are coming up with all of these documents and yeah. all that you know okay somebody is helping us with the name of the of the biology book <laughs> it said the biology book was what yanni it was see no it, it wait, was, wait, wait, wait. It, it was, it was no, before I, that I'll, one. I'll find it i'll probably find you it know, for my mates but, and but it, back to the photography yeah. issue i mean mm. I, was, I was just saying that things are changing so yeah. much editorials now all of these magazines everything are digital but they are doing so much yeah. with the photographs that yeah. now you have photographs in 3d in 4d Absolutely. you know you can do edits of pictures you didn't even take yeah you yeah. can create these things. So you should begin to, you know, research yeah. into that and become more relevant. Yeah, think yeah. about when we started uh, years ago, uh, decades ago with a pinhole camera. Indeed. And when we were in school, secondary school, the photographer comes and takes a picture. Mm-hmm. He brings it, uh, what do you call it, uh, about a week later mm-hmm. to a point where nearly every year a device comes that improves on the quality of photography. Mm-hmm. That, uh, this, this, this device takes brilliant Indeed. pictures. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, exactly what you said. Um, uh, you should look into the the the, into the, the, the newer the, the future of photography. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there was this other one um, I wanted to ask about the electric cars. Mm. Um, as businesses in Ghana, mm-hmm. you know, what would you say to them in terms of positioning themselves to become relevant? Yeah. I mean, as OMCs, as fuel stations, yeah. as this thing has started in other places already. How how do they position themselves to yeah. become relevant? And, and as usual, I mean, uh, four or five years ago, the, the government started talking about uh, LPG, for instance, and changing the way LPG is distributed. And for me, instead of the association looking at how they can maximize what you do, when you start introducing these things, you, you get resistance mm-hmm. and people start kicking. But that, that, that average tesla electric car i think is made up of about 14 or 15 major parts mm-hmm. okay i mean you, you just put it together it uh, is assembled okay so for it is not one of those cars that your our current technical vocational institutions are training people are in, able to handle uh, handle so straight away there's an opportunity there indeed how do you get to the maintenance the, of it uh, providing maintenance for what you call it. I mean, batteries will become a big, big issue. Mm-hmm. Electric uh, charging, uh, what you call it, uh, stations. And mm. uh, so if you rip the car apart, mm. uh, every every part of that car uh, is a potential problem waiting to happen. To be fixed. Okay. Indeed. It's a potential problem waiting to be fixed. Indeed. So that is where really for, for, for most businesses, uh, entrepreneurship, how you make money and so on. It's really about solving a problem. Mm. So once you can look at a problem, split the value chain of that problem, uh, put a cost to it, add value to it, mm-hmm. can you charge for a service or a product as far as the prop- the solution that you're, 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 you're offering? And I think that's where uh, people need to to. to 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 begin to yeah, look. look at one, one final thing about mm-hmm. uh, the skills I was talking about. The, the, the one about continuous learning. Mm-hmm. I think the Jap- Japanese call it uh, Japanese call it um, kaizen, mm-hmm. the, the process of continuous improvement. Uh, for lots of people, as soon as they finish and get their degree or whatever, that's about the last time they step into what you call it a, a, classroom, a classroom or whatever. <laughs> people don't do conti- If you belong to certain professions, an accountant, a lawyer, uh, project uh, management, you the will have to do. Case. Medical, yes, whatever, co- yeah. co- continuous professional development, and sometimes your your license is not renewed if you haven't uh, engaged in that a a certain number, uh, number of hours. You see, uh, but continuous professional development, continuous learning is critical for. Uh, it's kind of one of those skills that mm. you need in the in this global four point. You know, just end with this for about. me. While you talk about continuous learning for mm. business owners who mm. want to be relevant today, the conversation is going into data, all the soft skills, all yeah. the things that are not necessarily hardcore and tangible. Machines are assembling the vehicles mm. in all of our assembly plants and all that. What areas should uh, a business owner be reading about, apart from the area where their business operates or the industry in which they, they operate? What should they be looking at in terms of information? What should they read? Where should they read? Uh, there, there are several courses on mm. EDX. Uh, EDX has about 14 million, mm. uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, participants or mm-hmm. about 900 thousand whatever courses 
uh, Udemy. Mm -hmm. uh, there, are, there are all sorts of uh, free, uh, what do you call it? So just uh, go online, online just and go look on, for online them. Online and look for them. But focus on your particular industry mm -hmm. and, and look at the emerging trends, what is going to happen. And, and then there are people that make it their job to be futurists. Mm -hmm. And all they are looking at is the future of pharmacy, the future mm -hmm. of the oil and gas industry. Mm -hmm. Now, if we are going to go electric, cobalt, mm -hmm. which is one of the most important uh, minerals for, mm -hmm. for batteries, uh, what is the impact of the mining of cobalt on certain development countries, whether we have some here in Ghana, mm -hmm. uh, Mali, and I think DRC or something, mm -hmm. all those kind, the, the impact of that on 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 uh, economies is also very, very important. We, 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 it, the, the th we're so intertwined with with all these things that Indeed. it's very difficult to say you're ostracizing yourself and keeping yourself as an uh, as an island because from, now the continuum between them is becoming ever so tighter and becoming more seamless yep time has shrunk distance has shrunk space has shr is shrunk mm. everything we are now in the moment and everything links to one thing or the other we're all connected let's summarize our conversation today and sort of give a perspective on what we're doing next week i know it's a, an, ex an exciting conversation that is that touches on pretty much everything yeah that you do and uh, uh, what we're trying to do is to cause a shift yeah. in the way we think yeah. so that it affects everything else yeah. we do our decisions our posturing making ourselves relevant for the future we're trying to cause a shift in the way you think because the world is shifting we might as well shift with it we either evolve or we die what yeah. just summarize what we've done today and okay. let's look at what we're looking at next okay week for me. so very we've talked about e early childhood de mm. uh, development and how parents teachers educationists mm. governments uh, need to pay attention to to that very early mm. stage in, in our development we've talked about um, the various skills that mm -hmm. are required to be relevant and the kind of building blocks that you need for children students to be relevant in the global 4.0 uh, space that we are talking about we've talked about we've touched on teachers and mm. how teachers need to be also trained uh, retrained retooled a re uh, mindset mindset change and so yeah. on and so forth. For next week, it looks like this top ten imagine thing uh, I, has I, become I, uh, what you call it. I so it, so I we can spend some well. time yeah. on on that as well. But I also wanted to focus a bit on uh, um, tertiary mm. tertiary education, okay. uh, the different models that are that are uh, imagined. Mm -hmm. um, frankly, we don't need three thousand people. F uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what do you call it? In in a in a lecture hall, mm -hmm. um, there are all sorts of ways of uh, decongesting, mm -hmm. decongesting the, the the spaces in the university. That people could be on campus, but uh, in in some spaces, people are having their full year mm -hmm. on campus, but never step in 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 a in a in lecture, lecture hall. Everything is is, is online. The the MOOCs are what do you call it? Uh, are other other options. Mm -hmm. I mean. So we'll explore that and, and spend some time on the top 10. Imagine what you got. We'll look at stuff along the lines of um, UX designers, mm -hmm. uh, data strategists. I mean, th there's some weird and wonderful uh, professions that are imagined on. that nobody even thought about <laughs> about five, <laughs> ten years ago. Indeed. Thank you so much. I think this has been exciting. We've, we've ran out of time. What we will do is that we're getting a lot of hits which are requesting for information on the top 10 jobs that are coming up next couple of years in the top 10 declining jobs as well we will post that on our social media page and uh we'll try and make that available for you to go back and look at it if you've missed the show last week's show or today's show it's also be available on our social uh, media page joy fm by all means to go there and take a look this has been masterclass on your super station today masterclass was brought to us by goyle goyle good energy goyle yenara idea and also by lancaster university the only british university in all of west africa next week we come your way again with another exciting edition of Masterclass. My name, as always, is Yabanako. Thank you for listening and watching us. See you same time next week.